In our country's history, it has never been more critical that the people of faith shine their light. Martin Luther King Jr. said, love is the only force capable of transforming an enemy into a friend. Love, transformation. We recognize that love is more than a good feeling. Love is more than watching a Hallmark movie where everything turns out great in the end. But love is active. Love seeks justice. Love cares for others. Love calls us to the highest road. Love is work. Happy Martin Luther King Sunday. We welcome you to United Church of Hyde Park, a place committed to doing the work of love. call you to worship today. Ajani, Yazi, Roman, Kai, Josiah, Denise, Wei Jin, Joe, Edith, Jade, children, worship leaders, young, the old, seasoned, matured, vanilla, crimson, chocolate ebony united something made the hair stand up on our necks was it you oh god was it you that we saw blowing over the water was it you that we heard in those steps was it you that we felt in the beating of our own hearts was it you that called our names 
Was it you that called our name? Come, O oh God, come to search us, come to know us again. We were knit in your womb. We have tried to count your works. Come, O oh God, so that we can hear you calling our names here and now. <laughs> When the weight of all my dreams is when the weight of all my dreams is resting heavy on my head and the thoughtful words of help and hope have all been nicely said but I'm still hurt was being made in secret 
intricately woven in the depths of the earth, your eyes beheld my unformed substance. In your book were written all the days that were formed for me, when none of them as yet existed. How weighty to me are your thoughts, O God, how vast is the sum of them. I try to count them, they are more than the sand. I come to the end, I am still with you. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of God's holy word. Let us pray. Dear Lord, thank you for gathering us to this space that connects us to you, that reminds us of who we are, that calls us to this journey. May the words of my mouth and meditations of my heart be pleasing unto you, Lord. And may those who are listening be blessed. In Jesus' name, amen. We've been doing a series called Finding Our Way, Finding Our Way. And today we are on part three of that series, Inescapable Love, Inescapable Love. Recently, I was lamenting with another church over the loss of their church due to fire. There have been some churches throughout our nation that have been burned down. There was one church I knew of and they were holding a lament service and I wanted to be out there with them. And I listened to testimonies that grabbed me and spoke to what this church had meant to this community of faith. But there was one sharing that stuck with me. It was powerful and it edged me and it kind of jabbed me. And I kept coming back to this comment made by one particular member. She's an artist, she's a piano player, um, she works in the church as an artist, but she said until she came to this church, she had never been told that she was loved by God just as she was. And those words I can't shake. That here she is, she had lived all the way into her early 40s and had never been told that she was loved by God just as she was. In Psalm 139, we hear a strange and mysterious message that God knows us in a way that no other person does or can. We hear that God is acquainted with all of our ways that might be good or bad. God sees through the barriers we construct and the personas we put on. Verse 14 declares that we are fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works. We see this wonderfully made in babies as we coo and awe. Not so much in teens, not in adults, and almost forgotten in seniors. But in all stages and in all bodies and in all ailments, we are still wonderfully made. This psalm assumes an intimacy with God. You know me when I sit down and I rise up. You discern my thoughts from far away. You search out my path and my lying down and are acquainted with all my ways. Even before a word is on my tongue, O Lord, you know it completely. You hem me in behind and before and lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. God sees beyond the darkness that we might perceive within ourselves and others and in God's knowing of us in this intensely intimate and personal way. God continues to love us. I consider that inescapable love. The psalmist continues on, where can I go? Where can I flee from your presence? How do I get away from God? If I ascend to the heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in Sheol, you are there. If I take to the wings of the morning and settle in the farthest limits of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me and your right hand shall hold me fast. If I say, surely the darkness shall cover me and the light around me become night, even the darkness is not too dark for God. 
The night is as bright as day to God. You can't get away from God's love, people, no matter where we go. Even if we feel lost, God's love is there. Inescapable love. Some of us as kids grew up without the advances of technology, which means we had a lot of room to, for creativity and imagination. And boy, did we. Me and my cousin, Kenneth, we played a lot together. We had a lot of games, and he cut me some slack sometime as a boy because he was really hard. We had all kinds of games we played. One game, we had a German Shepherd dog, and he would be down in the yard, and we would open and slide the window up and he would come running toward us and this was not a nice dog this was not a play dog this was a guard dog and as soon as he made it to about the third step we'd slam the door then we wait for him to go on back down the steps to the yard and we would start this all over again somehow we got a little bit of joy out of that always knowing that the window pane was a barrier to us and him but there was another game we played that I'm a little bit ambivalent about. I enjoyed it, and then I didn't enjoy it. We had this game where we tickled each other. You know, when you start to tickle someone, at first it's a lot of fun. You're laughing uncontrollably. You're like being tickled, and you just can't control it. It's like you're laughing so hard, it feels like your insides are coming out, and there's just so much pleasure. And then it gets to a point where you just feel like you can't take any more. And you tell the person to stop. But stop is seen as a green light. So the person just keeps on tickling you. Stop, I can't take it. And the person just keeps on. Sometimes tickling can be hard and it's like you're trying to escape. But you're defeated. And so you find yourself unable to get away from the tickler and the tickling. And even when we do not feel worthy or deserving of God's love, it's like the tickle. It's still there. It's inescapable. One of my colleagues, Nadia Bowles Weber, had a visitor at her church who was leery. It felt like he was carrying a heavy burden. He would come to that worship, but he would leave soon thereafter. But each week he came back. And one week he found the courage to seek out the pastor and visit with the pastor for a while. And his first words were, if you knew me, you would not like me. Oddly, even with all that was at stake, he eventually shared with the pastor that he was a sexual perpetrator. He expected at that moment to be thrown out of the church. My colleague herself on the fringes explained that it was only her job to share the good news. Judgment was not her occupation. For sure, there would need to be some boundaries, and they would need to make sure that everyone was protected. But this community was for him also. This inescapable love is for you too. No matter how unworthy you feel, or no matter how you feel at all, this love offered by God is inescapable. My Baptist church in rural Virginia would sing this song with further, Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Okay, they did say it a third time. I'm not just doing it. Oh, how I love Jesus because he first loved me. What the song always suggested to me as a child, that our ability to love others hinged on being loved first. It is when we are loved that we can share love with others. It is being loved that we know how to love others. And the love of God is inescapable. And every body gets to experience it if they're open. God's love is inescapable. At the animal shelter, there was this dog that came to them aggressive and biting. And some of the people felt like they would have to put him down because the dog was aggressive and mean. But one of the trainers said, give him to me. This is a dog that has been terribly abused. And before we can say we want to put him down, we have to give this dog another experience. And so this trainer took the dog home and began to shower the dog with love, began to treat the dog with kindness. 
And within months, two months, when he bought the dog back, people were amazed. They didn't recognize the dog. A good haircut, a good dog grooming, and the love he had received had transformed this dog. You see, he had to be loved before he could show love that was in him all along. In our Finding Our Way worship series this month, we are rediscovering the basics of Christianity. And right at the center is that God loves us. Amy Grant wrote the song, Love Will Find a Way. But if I were writing it or I could re-edit the title, I'd say love helps us to find our way. Love anchors us. We cannot get away from it. Love not only finds a way, but it finds us. You can't give what you've not been given, and you can't show what you've not experienced yourself. And the love of God allows us to reach out to other souls in the purest of ways. Tomorrow we celebrate Martin Luther King Jr. Day. He and the Civil Rights Movement is centered in the inalienable rights of each human and how some humans are less valued than others in America. In Psalm 139, God assigns value and worth to each person at conception. Each of us has a valued identity that need not be diminished by denigrating language or the negative behavior of other people. Nor need we internalize, assign to ourselves, and act on such negative influences. Our identity is not defined by the derogatory words used or the way we get treated in this world. Our human worth is not lessened by racial profi profiling or other indignities. Our human worth is not lessened when folks see us with their own agendas. Our human worth is not lessened because others have a limited view or closed hearts to the capacity of God's inclusive love. Our valued identity is found in God who created and loved us from the very beginning. In her later years, Maya Angelou started studying with the Unity Church. And one day she was reading a book called Lessons in Truth. And in the book, there's a line which says, God loves me. She says, and when I came to read it, my mentor said, read it again. And I read it again, God loves me. And my mentor said, read it again. And she says, I said, God loves me. And he said, read it again. And finally, I said, God loves me. God loves me. Angela, Angela, at that moment, began to feel emotional and leaned over for a moment to gather herself. It still humbles me that this force, which made the leaves and fleas and stars and rivers and you, loves me. Me, Maya Angelou. That's why I am who I am. Yes, because God first loved me. You know, every piece of me and my totality, and I don't, I don't have to offer one word. Howard Thurman describes this sort of being known by God as being laid bare or stripped of the facade. In this knowing, the psalmist referenced the self as being seen at the deepest center or at the very core of who you are. This is a powerful love. And sometimes, like being tickled, maybe it's even too much to fathom that God loves you. I was watching one of these singing shows, and this female began to sing, Yes, Jesus loves me. And in the middle, she began to cry. And the people judging her asked what was going on. And she said, I felt it. I, I felt it. Jesus, God, loves us. Today I began with a story about a 40-year-old African-American artist, lesbian woman, who shared she had never heard that God 
loved her just as she was. Maybe she's not the only one that's not been hearing God loves her. Maybe minorities are not the only one that's hurt, not heard enough that God loves them. Maybe sexual perpetrators are not the only ones that have not heard it enough, God's love for them. Maybe even you, maybe even you haven't heard it enough that God loves you. Maybe you haven't basked in it. Maybe you brush it off, you hear, yeah, yeah, yeah. But you haven't really sat with God loves me. Maybe you're short on a counter of the closest kind. Maybe you've drifted away from just how much God loves you. Maybe like the sun, it's hard to look straight at it. God loves me. But it doesn't make it any less true. God loves you. God loves you. I want to end today with inviting you to say that because my Angelou shouldn't be the only one that gets to say it. God loves me. Come on, y'all, say it with me. God loves me. Let's do it one more time so you can really feel that and sit with it. Just sit with it. God loves me. Amen. I went up to the mountain because you asked me to. Up over Oh.
Amen. It is offering time. Here at the church, we have a few spots where people can park, and I get to park in this spot. But in order to be able to park, you have to have a clicker that opens the gate. And my clicker, man, it just stopped working. Uh, but if I kept teasing and playing with it, uh, I could eventually get the gate to open up. And so over the past weeks, me and Josiah have breathed on it. We have moved the battery around. We have tried to press the different spaces to get it to connect. But this week, I got a new clicker. Thank the Jesus. <laughs> and what's amazing about this new clicker is as soon as I click it, voila, the gate opens. Now, in my finite mind, I understand that there's something that connects, that allows the gate to open. And so it is with us. There's something that connects that allows us to give. And that connection has to happen. There's something about our connection with God, our connection with our spiritual journey, our connection with our Bible and our understanding that allows us to give. And sometimes when that connection doesn't happen, <laughs> the offering pray can be a little bit low. So I hope that you're connecting with a God that is bountiful and gives to us in abundance. I hope you're connecting with the God that loves you so. And I hope that out of that space of connection that you will share and continue to share your financial resources with us today. We invite you out of deep roots and deep connection to share your financial resources and to give today. Amen. Let us pray. It really is sweet to trust in Jesus. We trust you, Lord, with our offerings. May we make for change that doesn't yet exist. And may we give that change a name. 
And may we give through our fears. And may we give in our connection with you, O oh God. May we dare to call this hope wonderful in the hope of Christ Jesus. Amen. Well, good morning, United. We are, <laughs> I, <laughs> so uh, uh, we are trying to acknowledge and remember people's birthdays this year, and we just want to say happy birthday. We are so glad that you were born. Uh, this month so far, Judy Lampkin had a birthday January 3rd, and uh, January 10th, Janelle had a birthday, and January 10th, Last Sunday, Edith Yokely, our violinist, had a birthday. And January 16th, Lydia had a birthday. And today, guess whose birthday it is? You wouldn't guess. It is Wei Jin's birthday, and so we wish him. Yeah, he had to come to work anyway, so. <laughs> and this Saturday will be Stephanie Ull's birthday. So please share love. I'm sure all of those people would appreciate a happy birthday no matter when we give it. We say happy birthday. In different times, we would have cake, but we tell you to eat your cake without us. <laughs> and happy birthday. I want to remind you all or tell you for the first time that our annual church meeting will be February the 8th at 7 p.m. Please put that on your calendar, February the 8th, 7 p.m. We will be on Zoom and you will get that information. As it relates to concerns this morning, one of our uh, friends that's been coming for a while, Mina, uh, one of our seminary students from South Korea is under weather, so we ask that you continue to lift her up in prayers. Um, I checked in with her this week and still she's not feeling good. Her whole household also came up COVID positive. She's managed to be negative, um, but she, that caused her to have to live somewhere else in cold conditions. And um, so just continue to pray for her and lift up her spirits um, as well. As well, Georgetta Cooper, who's also a dear friend of ours who attends worship when we were worshiping, um, is at the University of Chicago and um, uh, suffered a mini stroke and will have to go on to rehabilitation. So please, uh, she does not want to receive phone calls because phone calls take energy, but um, let's lift her up in prayer. If you know of others that we can be praying for or concerns, please let the secretary know. You can call during the week and leave a message anytime. We've been doing a podcast called Crooked Courage, and this past week we got to launch Jeffrey Campbell, which is a guy that has been on 53rd Street homeless, and uh, we launched that video this week and um, have been getting a lot of positive feedback. We encourage you to look at the video because people have been wondering, where did he go? Sometimes when we see people that are homeless and in rough conditions and we don't see them, our minds can drift. And so he is doing really, really well. And so I just encourage some of you that have walked 53rd and know Jeffrey to watch the video and listen to his testimony. God really is good. Just a reminder that on this week, Contemporary Issues, which, will, which often reads a book, they will be meeting on this week, January 21st at, uh, in the, at 11 a.m. They are reading the book Deadland by Sarah Paretsky. Um, I think they've met one time before, so they may be a little ways in, but feel free to join them as well uh, on Thursday. And then last but not least, you all know that this Wednesday, is the inauguration of our president and vice president. And so just invite you in your prayer time to lift up that day and to lift up that event and um, to lift up peace uh, in our world. Uh, I think that's about all that I wanna say. Uh, we are observing Martin Luther King today and we have a work to do and our work is based in love. So thank you for tuning in. It is good to have you here with us today.
us, O oh God, send us to feel you calling our name. Send us to share the good news of your inescapable love. Send us to march and dance in the light of God. Send us, O oh God. Amen.